This video is sponsored by 3M Visual Attention Software. In case you haven't noticed, robots are starting to take over the world. They make our cars, clean our floors, and constantly make sure we know our car warranty is expired. Powering much of this technology is the quickly growing field of artificial intelligence. It seems like pretty much everything uses AI these days, and we're starting to see it emerge in creative fields in big ways. For example, we no longer have to cut out an object in Photoshop by hand. We just press a button and let the software do all the work. The real question is whether us graphic designers will be cast to the side and replaced by an app. Well, let's just say I'm optimistic that won't happen anytime soon. The main problem is that it's hard for a computer, or even a human for that matter, to quantify if a design is good or not. Design is unique because it's a combination of both form and function. It's pretty easy to judge if something functional is good or not. You simply determine what that thing was designed to do, and if it does it, then it's good. If it doesn't, well, it's not. The form, or the artistic side of things, is where it gets a bit more tricky, because good and bad can quickly become subjective terms, and what's good changes across cultures, across time, and simply from person to person. The things we design are meant to perform a function, but they're also meant to look good to a certain audience. And it's often hard for us to separate the objective functionality of a design, which is what it's supposed to accomplish, and the subjective aspects of it, if it's visually pleasing or not. When a client asks you to make the logo bigger, or to use a color that pops more, it's usually just to appease their personal design tastes, and they fail to understand how changes to the form impact the design's function. The same difficulty also arises if you work on a design for a long period of time. After a while, you can't tell whether your design functions good because you're so used to the information it's presenting and the message that it's telling. Out in the real world, every time someone comes across your design, it's usually the first time they've ever seen it. They don't have you there to tell them to pay attention to this headline or to make sure you notice this little detail over here in the background. Your design has to do that job for them within the five seconds that you've actually managed to capture their attention. So how are you supposed to tell if your design functions properly when you can't even experience it like your audience can for the very first time? Well, that's where a new tool called VAS comes into play. VAS is a visual attention software, which simply means that given an image of a design, it will simulate what an average person will look at within the first five seconds of viewing that image, as if it's the first time they're ever seeing it. This gives you an insight into which areas of your design are attention grabbing and which aren't. Which is important because in order for your design to function properly, the areas that people actually see need to align with the ones that we desire for them to see. VAS makes these predictions through artificial intelligence by considering five different visual characteristics of an image. It's edges, intensity, red-green contrast, blue-yellow contrast, and whether it has faces or not. Using those, VAS can predict a viewer's eye behavior with 92% accuracy compared to actual eye tracking tests. Now just to be clear, it's also important to understand what VAS isn't meant to do. First, it can't understand the context of your design. For example, it won't tell you that this pink flowery invitation is probably a bad fit for a biker's club. It'll simply tell you which areas of that invitation will draw the most attention. In the same way, it also won't tell you if your design looks good or is stylistically pleasing. A design like this will definitely grab attention, but it won't likely be very effective. So VAS clearly isn't here to make all of these design decisions for you, but it can certainly give you objective insights into the effects your design decisions will have on your audience. Let me show you how it works with a quick demo. Once you log into VAS, you're presented with a screen where you can upload your design. I've created a quick print ad that I'll be using for this test, but before I show it to you, I want to do a little experiment. My design will pop up on the screen in a few seconds, and when it does, I want you to pay super close attention to where your eyes go first, second, third, and then fourth. Watch how they travel across the image. It'll happen really quickly, so prepare yourself. Here's the image in three, two, one, so now I want you to leave a comment down below with the first four things you saw and in what order. We'll compare that with the results we get from VAS. So once we upload our image, we need to choose what type of image it is because VAS is actually designed to treat various types of images differently based on people's viewing behaviors when interacting with those particular mediums. This is a print ad, so we'll choose that. And now we come to this first screen where we'll need to mark what's called areas of interest, which are simply the areas we wanna get specific data from. To do this, we can simply draw a rectangle around an area of interest, like the headline up here. The logo and this bottom tagline are also regions we want people to see, and of course, our main subject matter is important as well. But instead of drawing a square around it, which would contain a lot of unimportant space in the region, we can draw a polygon instead to more closely capture the subject. Doing all of this is our way of informing the software of our design goals. And once that's done, we can let it analyze the image. 
So as you can see, it gives us individual probabilities of each area being seen during that first glance period. It looks like the logo has the highest chance of being seen, while the tagline here has the lowest. And not only that, but if you go to this gaze sequence tab, it'll show you what areas are most likely to be seen, regardless of the area of interest you chose in the beginning, as well as what order they'll be seen in. So I'm curious to know if these match up with what you guys saw on your first glance. Make sure to let me know if they did or didn't. You can really start to see how useful this can be though, because as I was designing this, I imagined the first thing that people would see would be the big boot here, followed by the headline, and and then the logo and tagline. But it seems like the logo is actually grabbing a lot more of the viewer's attention, even though it's much smaller than the other main elements. So if that's not what I want people to be drawn to first, I could use this information to make adjustments to my design to fix that. There are a few other tabs here that are also handy, like the heat map. This will give you a high fidelity look at each area on the image and how likely that area is to be seen during that first glance period. Areas in hot colors are more likely to draw attention and areas in cooler colors are less likely to. This is not only great to ensure that the areas you want to be seen are actually seen, but it also helps you see if there are any areas that are pulling too much attention away from your main content and becoming a distraction. The hotspots tab will show you a simpler view of the heat map with a numerical percentage of each area's likelihood of being seen. And if you're the type of person that's interested in the more detailed breakdown of how Vast came up with the results that it did, the last tab, Visual Elements, will give you insight into each of the five core image features that it analyzed and how those features played into the final decision. We can see where it found hard edges at, centered largely around the shoelaces it looks like, as well as the text and logo. The intensity is fairly blanketed across the image, which is expected since it's quite monochromatic. And likewise, you can see the red, green, and blue, yellow contrast regions. And of course, there's nothing in the face box because this image contains no faces. There are a few other great features of VAS, like being able to compare results from different image iterations, so you can see if changes you made brought the design more in line with your goals. And you also have access to download these various reports as PDFs to send to your clients. I'll actually be releasing a video very soon where I'll go through my usual process of creating a design from scratch while leveraging the power of VAS to ensure that at each design stage, I'm making decisions that align with my design goals. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see that. If you want to try out VAS yourself, then check out the link in the description. It really is a cool product with a ton of practical value, so I encourage you to give it a go. As always, leave a like on this video if you did like it, and you can see some other design videos right here. Thanks so much for watching, my friends, and I'll catch you in the next one.